Langston Hughes was born on February 1, 1909, in Joplin, Missouri. Hughes always loved writing, anything from poems to plays. He lived a very successful life, being known for his amazing writing skills. When he got older, after not writing for years, Hughes still tried to undo the wrong committed against his fellow African Americans. That's why Langston Hughes had such an impact during the Harlem Renaissance. His work and poems were so influential during his time, they informed the people of the struggles happening in African American homes. The poem that you are about to hear read by Langston Hughes himself is Mulatto, and it shows what kind of poems Hughes liked to make. Who got the bench, got the pot, got a nook, nice and dark, got them all. I am your son, white man. Georgia dusk in the turpentine woods. One of the pillars of the temple fell. You are my son like hell. The moon over the turpentine woods. The southern night full of stars, great big yellow stars. What's a body but a toy? Juicy bodies of nigger wenches, blue black against black fences. Oh, you little bastard boy, what's a body but a toy? The scent of pine wood stings the soft night air. What's the body of your mother? Silver moonlight everywhere. What's the body of your mother? Sharp pine scent in the evening air. A nigger night, a nigger joy, a little yellow bastard boy. No, you ain't my brother. Niggers ain't my brother. Not ever. Niggers ain't my brother. The southern night is full of stars, great big yellow stars. Oh, sweet as earth, dust dark bodies give sweet birth to little yellow bastard boys. Get on back there in the night, you ain't white. The bright stars scatter everywhere, pine wood scent in the evening air. A nigger night, a nigger joy. I am your son, white man. A little yellow bastard boy. Langston Hughes died May 22, 1967. However, his work lives on past his death, making us remember the injustices of the time. Noble Sissel was born on July 10, 1889. As a child, Sissel enjoyed singing very much. He sang in church choirs and in a glee club at his high school. Eventually, after befriending James Hubert U.B. Blake, Sissel became a jazz composer, lyricist, band leader, singer, and playwright. In 1915, Sissel and James Hubert U.B. Blake met and thus began a partnership that lasted several decades. With Sissel focusing on lyrics and Blake on music, they created hits like It's All Your Fault, introduced by Sophie Tucker. The pair planned to make an all-black Broadway show, and eventually they did, after Sissel joined and created a very successful jazz band regiment in World War I. Sissel and Blake finally realized their goal of putting a musical on Broadway called Shuffle Along, and it became the biggest hit of the 1921 season. Sissel lived a very successful life, not just for a black man, but for any man, and people knew that if they tried, they could be like Sissel. He inspired hope during a time when hope was needed. Got them all, but I haven't got you. 
Buford Delaney was born on December 30, 1901 in Knoxville, Tennessee and died on March 26, 1979 in Paris, France. His father, Samuel Delaney, was a barber and a Methodist minister. His mother, Delia, was also in the church and often helping her husband in cleaning houses on the side. She was born into slavery and therefore never learned how to read or write. Because of her experiences, she taught her kids to have a high self-esteem and the wrongs of slavery, as well as the importance of education. Delaney and his brother Joseph drew from a very early age, always drawing and copying illustrations from the Bible. Joseph was quoted saying, Buford could always strum on a ukulele and sing like mad, and could mimic with the best. Buford and I were complete opposites, me an introvert, and Buford the extrovert. Eventually, he went to work under Lloyd Branson, considered Knoxville's best artist. Delaney then moved to New York, which inspired some of his best artwork. After he died, Lloyd had this to say about Buford. The first living proof for me that a black man could be an artist. In a warmer time, a less blasphemous time, he would have been recognized as my master and I his pupil. He became for me an example of courage and integrity, humility and passion, and absolute integrity. I saw him shaken many times and I lived to see him broken, but I never saw him bow. Perhaps I should not say flatly what I believe, that he is a great painter, among the very greatest, but I do know that a great art can only be created out of love, and that no greater love has ever held a brush. Bill Robinson, later nicknamed Bojangles, was born May 25, 1878 in Richmond, Virginia, and died November 25, 1949 in New York City. As a child, Robinson wanted to be a jockey for horses, but as he grew up, he slowly began dancing more and more, and at the age of 11, he decided being a jockey was too impractical for him, and decided to pursue the career of being a dancer. He became popular in the black vaudeville circuit, and slowly began to perform in bigger and bigger shows. As Robinson was growing in skill, he became annoyed that the white dancers with half the talent were getting double the recognition. In 1921, while in a show in New York, Robinson danced up and down the stairs, creating his famous stair dance. Even though he was not the first one to dance on the stairs, it was so good, it was as if Robinson trademarked it. Even though Robinson was reaching his 60s, he was still able to keep his career in high swing. He appeared in nightclubs and musicals. In fact, it is said he was so active he could play in different shows in different theaters on the same night. At the end of his career, Bojangles should have been worth over $2 million, but he was flat broke, mostly because the older he got, the more generous he became, and he stayed that way until he died in 1949. During his busy career, he was able to attend benefits for artists who were not as lucky as he. In fact, one year he attended a staggering 400 benefits. This, and him being a kind man, over 30,000 people showed up to his funeral. He was seen as an inspiration and beloved by many. He proved that it could be done and you can be successful in a time where many people weren't.